Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of buying expensive and rare electronics to destroy. This time, I'm searching for something more rarer than the NES Classic Edition. And we're at our first tour to find it. We're searching for the Sega Genesis Classic Game Console. I think it'll be kind of hard to find because this is my first store and I doubt it'll be at the first store. It'll probably take me all day, but let's check the first store anyway. As I make my way towards the electronic selections, my doubts increase. I don't think there's even one in a public store to be found. Alright, I can't stand disappointment, so right now I'm closing my eyes. Uh, I think I'm at the selection of where they are. Okay, opening my eyes. Well, that was easier than expected. There's a ton, because no one wants them. Let's go home now. All right, let's go home now. Whoa, whoa. Out the way, trash. Make way for some real gaming treasures. Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Board Smashing. Today, we have an episode similar to this one, but it won't get as many views as this one. Today, we're looking at the Sega Genesis Classic Game Console. Basically, the NES Classic Edition made by Sega that nobody wants. Will it be trash, or will it be garbage? Let's find out in today's episode of Board Smashing. First, let's unbox it, I guess. Alright. First things first, it does look like the Sega Genesis Classic Game Console has more things going for it than the NES Classic Edition. I mean, it has 80 built-in games instead of 30, two controllers instead of one, and they're wireless, and a cartridge slot for all your Genesis games. But, if you look closer at the 80 built-in games, you can see that only 39 are probably worthwhile with Sega Genesis and Mortal Kombat, and the rest are trash. Flash memory. Checker, not checkers. T-Rex memory match. Mr. Balls. African American sheep. Jack's penis. And other classics such as Cross the Road. Just padding so they could say they had 80 games on this. Also, the wireless controllers require AAA batteries. External costs you have to worry about. But I'll admit the cartridge slot is pretty cool. Oh, and happy 25th anniversary, Sonic. All right, now let's really unbox it this time. A lot of padding to protect this thing. The instruction manual. AC cord. Wow, this looks safe. No HDMI at all! Composite video! Thing number one, and thing number two. And we have the Sega Genesis Classic Game Console. Oh, yeah. Alright, so one thing I found annoying so far is that there's a little screw you have to unscrew to get to the batteries for the controller. Found a screwdriver, let's put them in. Okay, we're not even gonna bother with the second controller. All right, let's plug her in. Out of the way, Chinese sweatshop plastic. Make room for Chinese sweatshop plastic. AC power, composite cables. Good thing this is an old TV or else I'll be out of luck. Gonna power it on now. Oh. Oh my god, that resolution, oh my god. You really gotta see in person to see how bad it is. Alright, but let's stop bitching and start bitching about the games. Oh, that's nice. You can only control it when the IR sensor is facing directly at the console. No Bluetooth. Which means if you're in a really intense game and you start going like this, some of the inputs would register, so you just end up raging. What does it mean when it says you can find more classics at this website? Does it mean you can download more games onto this? Oops. Or does it mean that you can play it online on the website? I don't know. Let's play a really obscure game to try it out. <sighs> Can't barely read that. 
That music sounds nothing like the original. <sighs> it makes me want to die. This music makes me want to make 13 tapes with reasons of why I killed myself and have every tape be this music. Alright, we're playing. I've never played this game before. I'm gonna go back up there. Oops. Let's play one of the so-called arcade games. Uh, Flash Memory. What is that music? I'm pretty sure this is a rendition of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. What? What just happened? I just saw a bunch of numbers. Four? What? Three, six, something? Oh, you have to pick the stars in order for when they flash numbers. Forget the Nintendo Switch! Sega has a current gen console and it's this! Amazing! We're gonna do a durability test of the controller! How many times you can throw it down before it breaks? One. Still working. Two. Still works. Three. Still alive. Wait, the controller is kind of acting wonky though. Oh wait, never mind. I just wasn't pointing it directly at the console. Four. Oh, it's starting to come apart. I just tried to press the A button and it sunk in. The light's not even flashing anymore. Now, how many hits can I take with my hammer? One, two, three, four. But good thing they included another one. I want Sonic to do that with me. All right, but right now, let's get down to some serious business. The main console durability test. It will be going against the NES Classic Edition in terms of durability. I will be doing the exact same test on this thing as I did with the NES Classic Edition. If you guys remember by watching that episode, which you should have, you would know that the NES Classic Edition died the second time I threw a rock on it. Let's see if this thing survives more or less of the amount of tests I throw at it. Alright, first test, a three foot drop. Three, two, one. Alright, let's see if it survived. Yep. What about six feet? Three, two, one. Something broke. The cartridge slot cover broke. Now I can stick anything I want in here. But will it still work? Nicely done. What about this random unknown height? Three, two, one. <sighs> Same still annoying method. After every test, running up to my room to test it. <sighs> Moment of truth. Yep. So, say that the game you're playing is again making you very angry so you gotta pick up the console and throw it at your TV. And will it work again? Hmm. Yep. Now, let's just throw it at a ThinkPad, because apparently they're indestructible. Oh man, the thing fell onto that awning. I'm gonna use the camera to knock it down. It's starting to fall apart, but it still works. Will it still play games though? Uh oh, 
If you take a look inside, the IR sensor kind of shifted. And now the only way you can play it is if you plug in a wire controller, which I don't have, so right now it's unplayable. But it still works. So, ludicrous drop test. Three, two, one. This side panel fell off, but still perfect. I gotta admit, it kinda looks better than the NES Classic Edition after going through the same tests. But will it be after I hit it with a hammer while it's playing? Three, two, one. It still turns on, but the LED died. And right now it's permanently gonna be on because the uh, power button sunk in when I pressed it. Now let's try it one more time. Three, two, one. Yep, still cruising. All right, last two tests. Let's see if we can survive a plain rock two times. Three, two, one. Oh God. I don't think I need to plug it in. It's clearly pretty destroyed. All right, so this thing is close to being as durable as an NES Classic Edition. Hey guys, right now, I'm in the woods. Why though? Well, I don't want to be caught in public with this thing on. Anyway, we're here to finish this thing off. Yeah, yeah, I know there's not much left of it, but I also brought this thing along to smash. Yeah, now's the time to get rid of it. All right. Thank you so much for watching Board Smashing, Sega Genesis, something, and apparently a monitor. I think this is the best I can do to both. Once again, thank you guys for watching, and remember, no matter how much there is, always clean up.